Morning YouTubers. So I got an interesting thought for a video that we're going to tackle today. And it kind of came from viewer comments and emails I've had from people. And I realized that part of learning the stick weld is understanding how wide of a bead you should be putting down. Now, when I teach people hands-on or have taught people hands-on in the past, it's really easy for me to look at a plate that they are welding on and tell them, hey, your bead's too slow, speed up, or hey, your bead's too narrow, slow down, or increase amperage, etc. Well, you guys have shared a lot of photos with me, which I appreciate because it helps me tell you what you need to do to improve, and it's first-hand you know, knowledge that I have. Well, I realized that you can't tell how wide a bead is that I've laid down. And unless I give measurements for you guys, how would you really know? I mean, like this, these welds here, for example, how wide are these? Well, realistically, you have no idea or anything you've seen me weld. You have no concept of how wide those are. So I thought I would take the time out of my day, run a couple welds with 332 7018 and eighth inch 7018 and then 332 and eighth inch 6010 6011 and we're actually going to take hands-on measurements in both uh standard and metric because i know i've got a lot of viewers that are from overseas to me so all over the world which is awesome i never would have thought that but that's awesome so i'm going to do metric measurements too so you guys can follow along and the whole theory is run what I consider to be proper size beads for this, which is quarter inch plate. And then I will take measurements and share them. So let's get into them. So first things first, this is quarter inch plate. I already know that, but uh, let's see what it is in millimeters. Oh, look at that. In, met in standard, it's pretty close. The mill scale adds a little bit. Let's go over here to metric. So about 640, 6.4, somewhere around there. Millimeter. Now, I have no idea because I don't live in a country other than the United States. I don't know if this is a standardized 6.4 millimeter roughly in other countries. Probably not. But for the sake of what we're doing, it won't matter too much. Just get yourself a plate of six to six and a half millimeter. Hopefully you can find something like that uh, steel so that you can follow along. At the amperages we're running, the thinner the plate is, the wider the weld will be, and the thicker it is over what I'm using here, the narrower it will be. So that's just things to consider. So I figured I would just jump in and start welding. Sorry for the abrupt transition, but there's a lot of welding I gotta do. I just fast forwarded through all the beads. I just left it in there for a little bit of extra entertainment for you guys, but the conclusion will be coming up soon along with all the data. It's going to be pretty interesting, I promise. Until then, have some corny music to listen to. All right, so you watch me weld all that up, and now's the time to go through the data and look at what we found. Now, I kind of thought about doing a little segment where I went through all of these details, but if you look at it, there's an astronomical amount of information, which it's kind of amazing what the rabbit hole can come up with off of a few welds, so pretty interesting. But I thought I'd do what I do best, which is to take a ton of knowledge and distill it down to a distillate that no, it won't get you drunk, but it will be more useful to you. 
Now at the end of this video, I will put a picture of this up. So if you want to look at the data and come to your own conclusions, whatever, that's fine. But I turn this into this and then I'm going to shorten this into what my opinion is. And I think it'll help you guys at least somewhat. So the whole purpose of me doing this was I can't be there watching you weld, nor can I measure your welds, nor can I get a real good idea of where you're at. I mean, some of you guys fortunately sent me pictures from my previous homework assignment, and I've been going through all of those, giving opinions and tips, and that, that will help you out tremendously. But for you guys that are just sitting in your garage or your shop trying to figure out where you're at in life with your welds, this uh, information should be pretty relevant. So let's start with the 7018. So the 7018 welds, this is uh, two pass with 332, roughly 90 to 95 amps, and then two passes with eighth inch rods, which uh, about 120 to 130 amps. Now just for you metric guys, uh, 2.4 millimeter rods, 3.2 millimeter rods. All right, with that said, the average measurement, which I measured all these and took average readings with a dial caliper or digital caliper in that case, the average reading for bead width on 332 for 7018 I had was 0.27 to 0.33 inch is the ballpark of what you should be looking for for bead width, which in metric is somewhere around 6.8 to 7.9 millimeter. Now, that's on quarter inch plate. If you're welding thinner plate, your bead may be a little bit wider. I can't really see a reason why your bead should be narrower than about 0.27 inch. At that point, you're just running your travel speed too fast or your amperage too low. I mean, maybe on really thin material, uh, a 332, maybe a little bit, but that's, again, pretty much my hard rule. I would say 0.27 to 0.33 inch is your target for your bead width, preferably on the higher side. Now, these two passes are eighth inch rods, which are 3.2 millimeter rods. The average bead width on these are about 0.33 to 0.36 wide, which is eight to 9.2 millimeter. That's what you should be shooting at. Now, these could be a fair amount wider, like maybe I would say up to 0.4 inch, if you're running slower and say filling a groove or something, it may be wider. But again, we're talking flat plate. That should get you in a ballpark. So if you can run a couple 7018 beads like this on plate, just take yourself a tape measure or a caliper and just take a measurement, a couple of them, and getting an idea, you know, of where you're at. For width and that will tell you if you are aligned with me then you're probably doing pretty good for width if you're narrower like I said you're moving too fast now the other thing I did do is I timed how long it took me to weld from here to here so this is a four inch plate which is I believe 10.16 centimeter I have it written down here for some reason but I believe if I remember right 10.16 wide plate and the average time was somewhere between 27 and 32 seconds to run these beads. So that is the benchmark time it should take you. If you're 10 seconds and you start here and you're here and you're counting in your head, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're way, way, way too fast. So somewhere around 30 seconds would be a good benchmark to weld four inches or 10.16 with these rods. So let's talk about the 6010. All right, so on these 6010 passes, again, ran two beads, these two around 60, 65 amps in that ballpark, and these two at 90, 95 amps. So the 332 rods, which are the 2.4 millimeter rods, the average bead width is about 0.32 to 0.37. So close to three eighths of an inch. Now that's eight to about 10 millimeter for you metric guys. Now the eighth inch passes, which will run at 90, 95 amps in that ballpark. It, uh, I had 0.36 to 0.42. So quite a bit wider than the 332 and obviously quite a bit wider than the 7018, which is about 10 to 11 millimeter. 
And that's what you should be aiming for for width. Now, if you compare these, I could have ran a little bit longer of an arc with the 7018, which would have flattened it out. That definitely, that's just how I run it though. I tend to run a very, very tight arc with 7018 and run very high amperage. That's just my preferred method. You may have different, but again, that's ballpark. You know, any wider than the numbers I gave you, you're gonna be, I guess, too wide with this and then any narrower and you're probably running too fast. So speed wise, the interesting thing is, is and I, in a previous video I even mentioned this, 60, 10, 60, 11, you have to travel slow, okay? The travel speed from start to finish is gonna be a lot slower than 7018. If you're running these as fast as 7018, your bead is gonna be super narrow, super crowned up, and it's not gonna be any good. So the average speed I came up with, with the 332, was about 40 to 47 seconds. Now I also ran some other beads on plate just to get a feel for it as well, and that's pretty much what I had. Now, it all depends on your whipping and pausing. By changing how you manipulate it, will increase or decrease travel speed. So that's something to think of. But I know that's a broad range, but that's what you should be looking at to go from you know, a four inch or 10.16 millimeter or centimeter plate, you know, 40 to 47 seconds with that 332. Now the eighth inch rod, I ran a fair amount faster. So I completed that in 32 to 35 seconds start to finish. So a little bit faster, as you can see, the bigger rod did deposit more metal, higher amperage did help with that. So that's a ballpark estimate. Like I said, this is important information if you want to run beads and you can run a straight like 60, 10, 60, 11. If your bead looks consistent, this is uh, worthwhile to compare where you're at to where I am. Now, last but not least, the 6013. So the 6013, I ran two passes, realized I didn't film it, so I couldn't calculate speed, so then I ran two more passes. The 6013, much as I suspected, is very similar to 7018 as far as all the numbers are concerned. So the eighth inch rods, and that's all I ran. I did not run 332 rods. I didn't have any. Eighth inch 6013, the average width is 0.30 to 0.36. So pretty much the same as 7018. And the travel speed, I actually was, I would say the same, maybe a little bit slower, was 28 to 33 seconds to cross this plate. So again, very similar to 7018, which is pretty much what I expected. Which brings up my next point is, is that for most stick welding, until you get into specialty rods like hard face and all that, you really only have two rod types as far as like what you really need to understand how to run. And that's 6010, 6011, and your 7014, 7018, 6013. Most of the rods will run very similar in travel speed, very similar in amperage, etc. The only difference being, again, 6010, 6011 runs at a much lower amperage than your other rods. So once you can run 6013 or 7018 perfect, you're going to find that crossing over to all rods but the 6010, 6011 is going to be pretty easy. Likewise, if you can weld with 6010, you can definitely weld with 6011. It welds very, very, very similar. So the key is, I guess the key takeaway is, is that pick a rod that you have access to. If it's 6013, hey, that's great. Practice, practice, practice. When you can run consistent beads, it wouldn't hurt to take some measurements, see where you're at, and focus on one rod getting everything perfect because the information, the learning curve will help you with that. Once you master one, the rest of them become easy. I mean, it's the truth. I'm also going to mention one more thing before I cut out here. I used to be a firearms instructor and teaching people to be accurate with marksmanship is actually, 
easier than you would think. And what I mean by that is people have this idea that, oh man, I have to hit the bullseye every shot when you're learning. And no, you don't. What you need to do is be consistent. Same thing with welding. It doesn't matter if your bead is necessarily the straightest or if it's, you know, your stops, your starts are, are rough, whatever. You need to focus on creating a bead that's equal in width, equal in height, and fairly straight, and just work on consistency. Just like in marksmanship, if you're off to the right three inches and down four inches, but every shot is there, that matters more than hitting the bullseye. Because one or two in a bullseye and five off paper means nothing compared to, you know, six, seven rounds a, an inch from the bullseye. I'd rather see that. And it's the same thing, like I said, with welding. You want to focus on just trying to be consistent. You know, you don't need the prettiest welds. You don't need, you know, any of that. Just focus on equal width, equal height, consistent travel speed, bead to bead. Once you can do that, everything else is easy. So focus on that. With that said, thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully this helps you out a little bit. I'll leave this up long enough for you to take a screenshot of it. This is the overview of the raw data that just gives a good guide. So take a picture of this, keep it somewhere that way you have access to it so you can take quick measurements and get an idea if you're even close to the ballpark where you should be. And here is all of the raw data, a lot of information. How useful this is to you, hard to say, but if you want to, just take a picture of it and keep it for your own sake.